In this video, we will try to recap the commands that we learned on the first day of the workshop. We will start logging in into the remote server. If you already have a terminal in your local computer, and this is the case if you have a Mac or if you have Linux, uh, the command is simply ssh, your username in the remote machine, I will use client 30, then at and the server address. This can be either an IP, a numerical address, or a domain name, like in this case, climb.seek.space. We are asked to enter the password, and I remind you that we will not receive any feedback, so no stars or dot while we type. If the password is correct, we are inside the new server. And as you can see, the prompt changed. This was the prompt in my local computer, and this is the prompt in the remote server. And the prompt is the indication that the computer is ready to receive commands. So this is the shell prompt. Here we type our commands, for example, who am I, to uh, verify our username in the remote server. And this is especially useful if we don't have the username uh, written in the prompt. Uh, we can check the position in the file system, so in what directory we are operating, that is, what is the current working directory. PWD means indeed print working directory. This directory is special, is our home. So every user has a home and by default is the username inside the home directory. So slash home and then slash client. We can start uh, checking which files are present in our current directory and there are none. This is a new account that we just created for this workshop. So we can create a new directory with mkdir course. And if I list the files now, I will see that there is a new directory indeed called course. So ls stands for list, and this is the command to list files. For now, remember that ls by default will print the files in your current position, but you can specify another path. So for example, with ls course, I will list the file present in course, and there are none. Or with ls slash tmp, this is an absolute path, I will list the files present in the temporary folder. So I can start retrieving some files from our GitHub repository. The command is git clone and then the address of the repository that is github.com latin learn underscore bash. URLs are one of the few things that you're allowed to copy and paste uh, in the terminal. For the other things, it's better to use the tab completion as you probably remember. So let's list the files again. We have a learn bash directory. If I want to enter the directory, I can cd l e, and if I press the tab key, the path will be automatically completed. I can list the files again. Now let's check what files are present in the phage directory. So in the phage directory, there are some files and another directory. I don't need to enter in the phage directory to see the content of the reads directory because I can simply specify that via ls. So list the files in phage and then reads. And ls can list the files present in multiple directories. So suppose that I want to list the files present in this directory, phage reads that we just checked. I can record it quickly with esc dot. And then I can add also, for example, the files directory. So when you specify multiple directories, you will have this preamble here. So the files present in files are here, and the files present in phage reads are below there. You can always add switches like minus L for the long format, and minus H to uh, write the file size in human readable, for example, with kilobytes and megabytes. When the parameters are switches, that means they are either on or off and they are not followed by any other information, you can combine them if they are in the short form like this. So minus HL minus LH is equal to minus H minus L. The order is not important. They are independent from each other. A useful command that we have to find files is called find indeed. ls, as the name implies, lists file. So we already know uh, what path we are looking into. While with find, we can specify, I go back to my home directory, we can specify the, uh, the path to scan. By default, it's the current directory, but I can explicitly write that I want to find files in my home. And with this command, I will list all the files and all the directories present in my home. 
if I want to only free the directories, I can add this parameter, minus type D. This is not a switch because minus type alone means nothing, we need to specify it. So with minus type D, I will print only the directories, and vice versa. With minus type F, I will print only the files. So minus type can allow us to, so minus type can be useful if you, if you already know, if you're looking for a file or for a directory. If you know something about the name of the file, you can add the minus name parameter. And I suggest you to always use uh, double quotes around it uh, to avoid problems if you add wildcards. For example, we can use the wildcard star and list all the files ending with txt. To copy file, the command is cp. That requires at least two parameters, the source, file, and the destination. Now, source can be one or more files, and the destination can only be uh, one path. So in the case, we are copying a single file. So let's try copying uh, learn bash page vir the nomic FNA, and I make a copy in course. So when I have a sing when I want to copy a single file, the destination can either be a directory. So if I hit enter and I list the files in course, I will see that there is a copy now of your genomic inside the course directory that was the destination here. But if the file, uh, but as I was saying, there is a second option. If you copy a single file, you can specify not only a directory but also a file name. This will make a copy with a different file name. So if I list the course files now, I will see that I have also a copy that was renamed. If you have more files that you want to copy, you must specify a directory as destination and all the files will be copied with the same original name. Let's have to make an example. In LearnBash page, we have some files ending with txt, and I want to copy all of them. Where? In the course directory. I received no feedback, but if I check with course, I see that there are also the txt files. Now I try again. As you can see, I didn't receive any warning. This means that if you copy a file to a position where a, a file with the same name was already existing, you will overwrite it, and unless you change the permissions of the file, uh, by default, you will not get any prompt or any warning. The CP command supports the minus V flag, that stands for verbose, that uh, will um, give you a progress report. So as long as the files are being copied, a new line will be printed, so you see this is to have a visual feedback of the operation. Before introducing new commands, let's uh, note that all the commands that we use so far are non-interactive. This means that we write a string, that is the command, that can be simple as who am I, or a little bit more complicated as this one. We hit enter, and then the program is executed without any interaction with the user. And when the program execution finishes, we have our prompt back. So the computer is ready to receive new commands. This means non-interactive. You launch the command and you don't need to do anything else. There are some interactive programs and some of them are really useful to inspect files from the command line. So I will introduce man, that is the command line manual. It's not necessarily really useful nowadays because Google can be an easier way to look for answers, but it's working exactly like the less text viewer, and so it's worth checking how man works. I will check the manual for mv, that is the command to move files. So as you can see, I don't get my prompt back. I have a text page with uh, the general synopsis of the command and a detailed description of all the uh, switches that we can add and all the parameters. For example, we already know that with minus v, or the long option, minus minus verbose, we will see uh, what is being done. So I can use the arrows to scroll up and down. And if I want to uh, look for some specific uh, keyword, I can perform a search. This is triggered by the forward slash key. When I hit the forward slash key at the bottom, I can enter some text, for example, verbose, and I will be redirected to the first occurrence of the word. I can jump to the next occurrence with lowercase n, and to the previous with uppercase n. In this case, it was a unique keyword. But uh, if I look for destination, for example, I see that I have this match 
I can up with capital N and jump to the other matches. Of course, it's very important to remember how to exit from MAN and to get our prompt back, and that's done with the Q key for 